Hey, hey, welcome to the Weekly Huddle with Shibs, where I bring you weekly Bitcoin adoption news and interviews from experts in the space. This week, I am very pleased to have the opportunity to bring to you an interview from Pierre Corbin, the director and writer of the documentary, The Great Reset and the Rise of Bitcoin. We discuss a bunch of topics, including his journey to Bitcoin, the inspiration for creating his first documentary, the process of content production, and we even discuss his current research and second film that is currently in production, The Great Reset and the Fight for the U.S. Dollar. But let's not waste any time and get right into it. Welcome to the Weekly HODL. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me. Pleasure being here. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited to have you on. Uh, you know, your documentary that you put out recently was was wonderful and happy to have made the connection uh, through a mutual uh, Bitcoin friend. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So as we get started here, just uh, do me a favor. Let, let's start from the beginning. Uh, let everybody know who you are, where you're from, uh, and a little bit about your journey to Bitcoin. Yeah, so, um, okay, so I'm Pierre Corbin. Uh, I'm half French, half Spanish, and I just grew up, you know, outside of any of these countries. I grew up mostly in Poland, going kind of back and forth. So uh, I've just been always moving around a lot, and that's uh, what I'm doing now, actually. I don't live anywhere. I just kind of float around. Uh, and, um, yeah, when it comes to Bitcoin, you know, uh, I, so I studied finance and business, and then I got into, you know, learning how to program. And that's kind of how I directed my career, you know. I decided to go mostly into the dev things, but marrying my finance and, you know, whatever studies I had, which weren't so much about, you know, the economy, because that's not really what they teach you when you study even a master's degree in finance, but more about, you know, accounting and like corporate finance, this, this kind of stuff. Um, and so I worked in just, you know, automating a lot of accounting systems and this, this kind of stuff, um, for big clients, you know, I was a consultant, so that was my last fiat job. Uh, and, um, it was getting a bit boring, you know, uh, just getting, you know, earning more money for these big corporations when on the other side, you know, I was growing this passion for Bitcoin and just uh, the actual impact that it has, you know, when you work a corporate job, there's always the, the, everything around is built for you to believe that you're on a mission, you know, it's about the greater good and what you're doing is awesome. When in fact, it's just getting, you know, corporations rich and whatever employee you are, you're getting kind of ripped off with the system. And there's a true revolution with Bitcoin that can actually change things and do things for the greater good. So um, after, you know, having many conversations with my boss that obviously, you know, really cool guy wanted me to do what I wanted to do. Um, and there was nothing in the direction of working with Bitcoin. No, I mean, at the same time, not so many corporations are actually looking into it. And if they do, they look at it internally before even reaching out to consultants. So, you know, there was no vision there. So I just thought, okay, I have to do this on my own. And I decided to just uh, quit and uh, with no idea what I would do, actually. I mean, a film was clearly not on the top of my list, actually. <laughs> when oh, yeah. I quit, I just did, did a list of like, all the Bitcoin topics that I would want to, you know, dig deeper into. Uh, I didn't touch maybe 80% of these topics, actually, because, you know, you just start one rabbit hole and you, I mean, just this takes you a lot of time. And uh, after just uh, three months, you know, one summer of uh, um, just uh, thinking, studying, and like, what am I going to do next? What value am I going to add to Bitcoin? I watched one documentary about the, it's called Inside Job. It's about the financial crisis of 2008 that I really recommend watching if ever. And the next day, uh, yeah, I went for a run. I did the longest run ever. And I was just thinking, man, this documentary was awesome. Man, maybe I could do a documentary. And I just kept on running and came up with a storyline while I was running. I came back, didn't even shower, just started noting stuff down and, uh, and then started working. Uh, yeah, amazing. So you didn't have any background in cinematography or anything like that, right? Well, while I was studying, uh, I did my master's degree in Sydney. While I was studying there, I did do a six month film course. And it was an interest that I had, you know, I would go places, travel, and I would try and film some stuff, do some vlogs kind of thing. Like, it was always an interest that I had, you know, uh, and uh, 
But, so it's kind of funny in the end of the first project I did once I went independent was was a film, yeah. And it shows that it was a big interest, actually bigger than I even thought it was myself. Yeah, cool. So so before we get more down the the film path, um, so what about Bitcoin in specific? Like when when did you first hear about it? What was your kind of journey to to Bitcoin? Yeah. So the first time I heard about it was around 2011, I think. It was my brother. My brother was always uh, the more entrepreneurial kind of guy. And uh, he would always, you know, find these kind of stories. And uh, so he told me about Bitcoin. And I was like, what is this? You know, in 2011, I was super young. I was studying, like I was doing my bachelor's. So I, I mean, I had no idea, even not, not no interest whatsoever. Uh, it was just a crazy idea, you know. And then a few years later, in 2013, he started mining with a friend of mine. Um, and, you know, it was cool. Like, I mean, I got interested in what it was, but that's when I moved away to Australia uh, to do, to continue my, my studies. So no Bitcoin topic beyond that, you know, and they dropped anyway, once, uh, uh, Bitcoin just, you know, I think it hit a thousand bucks in 2013 and then it dropped to like a hundred dollars and, uh, they, you know, they dropped their mining, uh, business i guess because they were just losing too much money they thought bitcoin was dead you know they were victims yeah. of that too it was just so early right very easy to get trapped and um and then 2017 uh i like i was back you know i was a uh, second year working my first corporate job and uh, uh you know stacking money and um and then I thought, okay, like, uh, it's, uh, I have to have a financial plan. I always had this, you know, I was splitting my savings, all of this, the classic kind of way to like take care of your personal finance. And, uh, and rather than put things in stocks, I decided to put things in crypto. It wasn't Bitcoin then yet. Uh, my first coin, the first coin I bought was not Bitcoin. Uh, you're and, forgiven. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 So, I mean, the first time I bought Bitcoin was quite low. It was at about $3,000. Um, but, uh, yeah, my biggest stack then was Ethereum and some shit coins. Big, uh, big mistake there. That's but that's how you learn, you know. That's uh, we all have our path to Bitcoin, yeah. And absolutely. very often the path to Bitcoin starts with shit coins. That's how it is. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, um, you know, it it's like uh, you know, a devil on one side, and then you you know because it, it brings more people in, I would say, but it's also one of the greatest distractions um, in the space, yeah, right? Keeping people away from, is, but. But at the same time, you know, it's one of the best um, education processes. I mean, it's a hard one, obviously, because you lose a ton of cash in, in the process. But but basically, what I mean by that is that in 2017, I was buying a bunch of shit coins. Uh, and when the market started dropping, I mean, I lost a lot of money. Some of the shit coins I owned went, to, I mean, worth zero, literally zero. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, beyond zero, you know, it's like, uh, <laughs> Minus infinity, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so um, there's just this moment where I mean, when you invest in financial markets, the moment where you actually start learning is when you lose money because you ask yourself, why the fuck am I losing money, right? Like I need yeah. to understand that, and uh, and this is what led me to actually understanding why Bitcoin was the only thing that mattered, yeah, because there's just some things that will never change with Bitcoin, and that's just it doesn't exist in crypto and if you're thinking in terms of life opportunities you have something like bitcoin there's no need to go and like put on more risk with like some crypto bullshit that is worthless and managed by a team of people that have no idea what they're doing and they're just trying to like fill up their their pockets with cash right like it's like there's no need to go for something else than than bitcoin so um yeah i think uh the i wouldn't have gone that rabbit hole without losing money in shit coins so you know <laughs> yeah yeah no I, I i totally understand that i think everybody you know nobody really goes direct to bitcoin most of the time right like mm -hmm. they 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 get their feet in they dabble a little bit then they start reading and they kind of go down this journey and go like okay well what what makes bitcoin different than the rest of these and then you know suddenly you start thinking about, oh my gosh, what is this doing for, you know, populations in Africa? What is this doing in South America? What is this doing for, you know, uh, people of Lebanon, Turkey, whatever it might be, right? Um, and yeah. then you you kind of develop this this passion for it. I think it's kind of interesting um, that, that you took this, uh, and kudos to you for taking a jump out of the corporate world. You know, I'm still in, uh, still in the corporate world now um but have such a passion for bitcoin that i started the show um what do you think that it is that that like 
you know, makes you, uh, makes people so passionate that they're willing to kind of like spend their extra time or, um, you know, quit their jobs and, and to start working on Bitcoin. What do you, what do you think that it is that, that causes that? I think it's cause it's, I mean, it, it, there, okay. So it's an asset that was built only through a community yeah? and anyone can decide to join that community and, uh, and add value in whatever way possible. Right. I mean, I made a film, you started your channel. Some people translate films, translate, translate books, you know, just anything can add value to, to this network, to this community. And I think people become passionate about Bitcoin because it's the first time that they realize actually I can help in a transition towards something that I think can help the world in the future. And I think that's what motivates people because the more you dig into Bitcoin, you more the more you understand its importance. And the more time you spend following the community, the more you realize there's opportunities for everyone, actually, because everyone, I mean, we're lucky enough, especially for content producers, to be part of a community of people that just want to consume as much Bitcoin knowledge as they can, right? Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, just to create content around that, of course, that's a huge opportunity, but everything that comes behind it as well. So I think, uh, you know, it's it, basically it's easy to become passionate about it and have the feeling that you're working on something that matters. And then, you know, if you think enough, then it's easy to find an opportunity to contribute as well. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, when I was kind of going down this journey, I mean, it always started off with, you know, trying to build something for my my future children and my future grandchildren, uh, you know, a better life for them. And then when you realize that, hey, this this is something that not only can help with that, but then can help just build a better world. Uh, it, it gives you something that you can kind of uh, attach to with some passion uh, and, and feel like your time is well spent, regardless of, you know, how many views you get on YouTube or, you know, how many comments or clicks or whatever it is, right? Like as long as yeah. there's one person uh, that might get inspired to to read a book or or go down the journey of un, you know financial understanding. Um, you've made the world a better place, and that's a good feeling. Yeah, definitely agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a, as you were producing the first uh, your your first film, what what did you kind of learn or, uh, along that journey? You know, was there anything about Bitcoin, about yourself, about you know uh, production? You know, what what was kind of the most interesting thing that you you found. Yeah, so I guess <laughs> there's a, a lot there, actually. Um, so, okay, so um, maybe there's like three categories, you know, there's what I learned about myself and how mm -hmm. stubborn I can be, <laughs> although I knew it, but this, uh, yeah. Then there's um, what I learned about, you know, film production and what I learned about Bitcoin and the economy. Now, that third part, I, like, I had a lot of the, because um, I wrote the whole thing about the film, right? Uh, like the whole film, I'm the writer. And um, I wrote it based off um, one source idea, which was an article that was written by Dylan Leclerc, where he looked back at, the, at Ray Dalio's film, How the Economic Machine Works, and was just highlighting some of the points there and then explaining how Bitcoin could be this this new asset, you know, that could uh, replace our current system. And so this this was the original idea for the film. And I thought, man, like, it's really cool what Dylan, like the idea that Dylan had in this article, but it was just like way too short. I mean, I wanted more, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. um, so I thought, okay, like I'll start by rewatching how the economy machine works and what are the important points from that, which I think the more relevant ones were the ones where he explains the productivity growth and uh, how debt changes that and gives us waves and creates this boom and bust cycle and the short and long-term cycles, as well as what are the three things that central banks tend to do when there's a, uh, you know, a, um, when the economy reaches the point where it has to deleverage and when we shift from uh, what well, to one of the long-term cycles, but to the downside, which is, you know, uh, control lower interest rates, uh, print a ton of money and increase welfare spending. And just using these points uh, and digging into the data as to 
where we're at today. Yeah. So I, I knew many of these concepts, but I had to go and fetch this data, yeah. aggregate data, present it, how, you know, like, and that's, uh, that's part of the learning that I had, you know, because I knew all of this was there, but when you're yourself doing through the data and trying to put it in a way and explain the data, you know, make it uh, comprehensive to everyone, then uh, the the data impacts you more. Yeah? And you remember it some more, obviously. Yeah. Um, so, so there was that, you know, and then when it came to everything, when I'm explaining Bitcoin, uh, it was kind of the same thing, you know, like I knew that there's, you know, the impact that Bitcoin has on the energy system right uh but then you just have to go and dig a bit deeper what is actually being done and how do you present it so you know i was able to write all of it and then come back and just add more details to what i had written you know after doing this extra research so yeah it just makes you go deeper in a rabbit hole and i think it's a whether it's producing a film or writing an article or something i think it's a great exercise for anyone to actually learn more about what you're researching i think it's uh really because you're actually using it so you remember it and uh, it yeah pushes you to be even more precise you know because you can't just throw a number out there you have to throw a number that is backed by a source yeah yeah and for my film everything that i mentioned every single data source everything is on the website you know i wanted to make it as clear as possible that anyone can go review what i'm saying that is not me saying it it's based off real sources right yeah. So it makes you be more um, rigorous, you know, like you have to be much more precise about your work. Um, so, yeah, so that that was like one point, right? Uh, but then there's the whole movie production. I mean, like I knew it would be like a lot of work uh, and it was maybe more work than, than I expected. <laughs> but it was, it was still a lot of fun, you know, it was very exciting to be able to bring some of my friends that are, you know, great at music production and uh, they... I had started my first version of the film before they started, you know, adding their uh, skills to it. And it was very exciting to see the film just get better and better. And yeah. th this was this was a really, really cool feeling. But other than that, you know, I didn't do the film in a, let's say, classic way. The approach that I'm trying to do now with my new project. I'm, uh, the way I did it was really, I had one general outline and then I would just write a part of it and start editing, write the next part, start editing. So it was okay. really, you know, as I just decided to move forward, because I did everything, like the first version, I mean, I did all the editing, I did all the oh, you know, wow. voiceover. So, so like, um, I was just able to, to go at my own pace and then uh, work with uh, the other people that, you know, just polished the editing or worked on the music production and so on. Uh, that, that came later, uh, which was, I have to say, even more exciting because I can geek out on my computer and spend some time editing, telling the story, you know, making it look nice. I spend hours and it, it flies like super fast. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, it's just you alone uh, kind of geeking out. Yeah? Uh, when uh, you're doing this with someone else that is bringing, you know, they're passionate about what you're doing and adding their own value to your project, that's very exciting. Um, yeah. Much more exciting. Yeah, that's cool. I've never actually gotten to that uh, that step besides having guests on, but uh, I mm -hmm. definitely, um, you know, I definitely hear you as far as like doing your editing and like it's the only time that I can like put my phone away and not look at it for hours while I'm, yeah. you know, getting into something and making edits and creating animations and things like that. It's uh, it's a nice creative outlet for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how how was uh, how was the first video viewed? You know, how, 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 what was the feedback? What, what have your thoughts been? It's almost near like a million views, I think, at this point, like over 700 and some thousand. And it seems like it's doing yeah, well. So, what was the feedback? So, yeah. So on, on my channel, it, it's reaching 700,000 views now, but it's on other channels. And in total, we're getting closer to 1.2 million views, which wow. is uh, really cool. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, how is it? I mean, really really well i was very happy you know because I, I wasn't sure how it would be received obviously i mean i put all the work in the production um and i also you know try to reach out to as many people as possible to try and um you know get this promoted as well i was lucky enough that peter mccormack uh he like he saw a early edit of the film uh and i was just exchanging emails with him and he said that look whenever it comes out uh, send me an email with the with the tweet and I'll retweet it, which he did, which was, I mean, awesome. <laughs> like really, because yeah. it brings just a bunch of people. I also managed to get in touch with Bitcoin Magazine. 
and get uh, i mean they they really liked the idea of the film they they also saw a, a first edit uh, they asked for a trailer and for me to write an article and so they shared that and then they retweeted it and this this really you know got it going um and i think uh, you know what it worked well thanks to that on youtube because i think what happened is that um because peter mccormack and bitcoin magazine shared that mm -hmm. then there was bitcoiners that started watching it and watched a long part of it now one of the important things for the youtube algorithm is the um you know um retention how yeah, long yeah. a view your viewer is watching your video and in a long film retention can be quite high compared to other videos because you watch 20 minutes of it and you've only seen a third of the film so it makes you continue and i had an average view time of uh, uh 19 minutes which is quite high and so all of the all of the other views that i got were from the youtube uh recommendations mm. it wasn't from all the efforts i was making on twitter yeah outside so on, sources yeah yeah so so basically it started scaling really fast i mean there was a point where i had twenty thousand views a day which was crazy yeah uh, so um yeah i think that's uh yeah i mean it was super satisfying like to be honest and people reaching out and just commenting so much i mean there was really a hype that was being built around it and uh and it felt great you know like yeah. I mean, much better than what I, I had a goal of about 100,000 views, you know, in my mind, if I had 100,000 views, the film was a success, like enough of a success. Good. So like, you know, the results I've got now, like, it, yeah, it blew my mind when it started uh, gaining so much traction. Yeah, well, well, congratulations. I mean, obviously, it, it's uh, inspired you to search to do more. So tell me about Tell me about the new film and, and, and what the inspiration is for it and, and where you're trying to take it. Yeah, so uh, basically it's called The Fight for the US Dollar. Uh, it's part of the initiative. So my first film is called The Great Reset and the Rise of Bitcoin. Um, I kind of rebranded the website, uh, the Twitter account. So it's The Great Reset Films because under the same, you know, reusing the same network that was built thanks to that. So it's really The Great Reset and The Fight for the US Dollar, I guess. You gotcha. Uh, and um, the idea of it is to show who are the actors that are trying to block Bitcoin adoption in the world and with a focus on Central America. And in Central America, the actor that is really trying to block that today is the U.S. government. Um, because although the U.S. Go I mean, the U.S. government has two positions when it comes to Bitcoin, right? On one side, there's some bullish news. On the other side, there's some really negative news, right? And the approach that, um, that I want to take here is really about... Um, how the US in Central America is trying to keep the control that it has on the sovereignty of these nations that it has had for like 200 years, right? Since short after the US uh, revolution. Um, and they're trying to enforce this today and we see it with Bitcoin. And essentially what it is, is the US defending the US dollar, right? So that's, that's the storyline, you know, with, um, the historical part of it and the influence of the US in Central America and in Latin America, and and then uh, how it evolved to today, uh, Bitcoin being one of the reasons why they're pushing this influence. And what I want to show is that people that are fighting the adoption of Bitcoin there, they're actually fighting freedom of the individuals, but even of the nations themselves, and that they shouldn't. And why? Because Bitcoin has all of these benefits that I want to cover as well, right? So we're finishing with the positive outlook of what our world could look like if we accepted Bitcoin, um, which I think there's already some great content there. Like uh, there's a short film called Bitcoin is Generational Wealth that uh, is uh, quite an inspiration for this kind of message. And, uh, and in fact, the director of Bitcoin is Generational Wealth, uh, he's called Matt Hornick. Uh, he's Canadian and he is joining that project as executive producer and uh, with his production company, they're committing some money as well. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm uh, very confident that we'll be able to build the right story around it. And, uh, and uh, if we have the right people involved, everyone that uh, will work at every stage of the production, they're all Bitcoiners, people that reached out to me or worked on the first film with me. So, uh, Oh, so yeah, cool. uh, it's very very exciting. Yeah. I interesting. So you're ta you're taking a little bit uh, of a divergence from like the typical filmmaking of making the U.S. look like uh, 
you know, like the always the good guys, right? The U.S. and most major films. So this will be interesting. Um, do you know what your Do you know what your following is primarily? Like where, you know, the people that viewed your first film, and and is is that mainly from the U.S. or is yeah. where's that from? Yeah, mainly yeah. from the U.S. Yeah, yeah so yeah, really cool it'll be it'll be interesting to see um you know how, how this particular film is received so are you getting to do any traveling or is this mainly just a, a research based or what are you doing uh, in preparation for this one so um what's uh what we're doing now is i have a, a bunch of researchers that are working with me there's five of us in total Okay. Um, three of them are from Latin America, which is, you know, great to also have their own personal view on the things. And they're very excited, learning a lot in, in the process. And what we're doing is uh, we're doing our research and trying to open, open source it as well. But for two reasons, you know, because we're in the middle of uh, a fundraiser on Geyser to try and get plebs to donate to our cause. So we can actually, you know, get the film going. It's mostly, you know, to make sure that we have a following, you know, if we can show that there's a thousand people following, it's so much easier to get money behind, you know? Yeah. So uh, th that's that's kind of, so anyone, if you have just even one set to spare, don't hesitate to donate. I'll just <laughs> plug that in. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, basically- Yeah, we can put it in the show notes. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, but basically what, um, what we're trying to do is uh, um, do some research, write some articles about it, which allows us to have a you know bibliography of our own research. So we just stack it and we can always revert back to it. We have some real data there. And it allows us to share this to uh, people that could be interested with the topic. And so they themselves learn more as we are progressing with our research. And um, we use this as a way to um, well, bring more people. And you know we're lucky enough that uh, there's bitcoinnews.com. They're like an official partner of our, of our project. They are publishing all of our articles. We send whatever article we do to Bitcoin Magazine. And so far, there's, I think, four articles that wow. will be published. Two so far have been published. So, so you know, they're like, because we're actually trying to bring value and uh, through an angle that not so many people necessarily look at, because a lot of it is just news. We're trying to look at some historical context and bring it back to the situation today to do a bit of a comparison and try and get some new kind of insights, you know? Uh, yeah. And then I make videos out of this uh, weekly. So we try and make one article a week, one video a week. And yeah, just to continue with our research and, and you know, building on that. But then, um, yeah, the idea is to interview a bunch of people. So at the source of the story is Samson Mao. And he, uh, I mean, because I met him in El Salvador, he mentioned that like he could observe this pressure from the US and uh, that it's a story worth telling and, you know, after thinking a bit about it myself, I came up with an actual story that could work. And uh, and so he's uh, going to be interviewed for it. Uh, he's opening his network as well for that in uh, Central America and beyond. Um, yeah, such as, you know, Indira Kempis, Senator of Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, we have also Carlos Maslatón. So he's from Argentina, uh, but uh, he, uh, he's a politician. He's now a Bitcoiner and influencer in uh, uh, Argentina. Uh, and he has a lot of very good stories when it comes to how that influence was perceived in the years 2000 when he was there, but also he's taught geopolitics. So he has a very great understanding of how, how this works. There's a uh, Lynn Alden also that uh, confirmed she would uh, be willing to be interviewed oh, for that because she can really tell a story of, you know, the expansion of the U S dollar, how this, how this worked, um, which, um, you know, is great for an intro. Uh, and, um, yeah, I mean, she's, she's amazing. Just I mean, being, able she's to so sharp. Her. It's, it's unbelievable. I've been, uh, yeah. doing what I can to reach out and hopefully get her on the show at one point, but yeah, I don't yeah. like, I, I look at her with high regards um and, and her yeah, analysis it's, for sure. uh, it's impressive really so so yeah it would be uh you know great to be able to put some of these some of these names but what i'm also trying to do is uh you know how i can get people from the other side of the story too because it's all great if you interview bitcoiners but i think it would be so much more interesting to be able to um interview uh ideally the u.s senators that uh put out the accountability for cryptocurrency and el salvador act right mm -hmm. so bill cassidy bob menendez and a third one, I forgot. But um, you know, getting their their 
perspective because I think it's in their interest too to you know explain why um, they should do that. And I, I mean, I would have a conversation completely unbiased, you know, and yeah. try really to understand their 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 point of view, and then through the other interviews that I have, the additional research, kind of cold bullshit, you know? But maybe, I mean, you never know. With documentary filmmaking, the story can change. I mean, yeah. the, the story is constantly rewritten as you go. So, um, I mean, the, maybe, the, you know, there's some opinions that might change based on what they say. It, it's, uh, I think it's, it's important to understand both sides of the story because, you know, if the U.S. is trying to defend the U.S. dollar, it's, you know, for the right reasons for their citizens, yeah? But what I kind of want to point out is that if you do it for your own citizens, but it goes against the rest of the world just for their defense, then it's a bit questionable, right? But it's not just the US, yeah? Like, And the film will cover other aspects. I mean, so I'm part French, yeah? And France has been controlling, you know, the whole Africa, Central yeah. African region. Uh, and that's the exact same kind of story right it's just a different part of the world and uh, they also have a nation that adopted bitcoin and shit coins but you know i won't mention that <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. but <laughs> yeah it's it, it's interesting uh to just you know look at it objectively and try to understand you know and it would be it would be good to hear from from the senators that that chimed in on that bill i mean one one of the concerns is you know if we've got uh, a reserve currency that's underpinning the entire system and it suddenly collapses or, or basically, you know, gets taken away or gets outed or whatever it might be like what ensues after that. So that period of time, you know, um, is, is a little concerning, right? Like whatever that transition is, I think it's uh, something that a lot of people uh, think about. So I'd be interested, um, you know, do you think your film will touch base on what, uh, you know, what a, the other option is, you know, besides, um, you know, US dollar hegemony yeah. being pushed on everybody, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I want the film to focus a lot on Bitcoin because this is what I, I hope um, in this transition will be the end result, right? Uh, the thing is that we're currently in a situation where we have no idea what's going to happen, right? Because you have on yeah. one side... Russia that is, I mean, there's a clear conflict between, you know, the West and the East. Uh, we're back to some Cold War kind of situation, yeah. um, kind of, right? Uh, and there's, you know, there's the power that is the US that is clearly losing its influence among certain nations in the world that are taking the side of Russia. And they're also doing it for whatever reason they think is the correct reason, right? I mean, the, the, each country has their own motivation. But it is clear that they are becoming stronger you know there's the the BRICS alliance to try and build their reserve currency and and they um i mean they're doing it for the right reasons when it comes to the inflationary world that comes from the us dollar now yep. that's what they're saying right it doesn't mean that their option whatever it would be wouldn't be the exact same thing or even more inflationary in fact yep. if you look at the you know close Russian and Chinese history, you'd guess it's likely going to be even more inflationary, right? But mm -hmm. regardless, that's their message, right? And I think it can be very compelling to a lot of nations, and especially that it's an easy thing to communicate, you know? When you have Putin giving a speech where he clearly says, if all third world countries are experiencing uh, inflation today, it's because of the US and the US dollar. Yeah. I mean, you have a lot of the world, I mean, the leaders of these uh, nations that just say, yes, 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 that's, uh, regardless if it's true or not, that's a great message I can tell my people, you know? So yeah. it's, um, yeah, it's... Uh, so, so we have no idea where it's going to go, but I think a future where the reserve currency is based off Russia and China, I mean, I prefer the US dollar first off, and beyond any of this, I just think Bitcoin should take the this space. Yeah, certainly. More. So, you know, the, but the film will cover anyway these other options as well, because because it's important to to mention them, you know, show what's happening. Yeah. Uh, but you know, bigger focus on, on Bitcoin, because that's the idea that I think has to be pushed forward. And, you know, it's a like one and a half to two hour film. So it's it's fairly short. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So when uh, I, I really appreciate that you're kind of providing education, education along the whole process, you know, via the, the articles that you're putting out, the 
um, the short videos and things like that. Uh, and then it all kind of comes together in a crescendo of this final video that you're putting together. So w when is it expected to be released or what do you have? Uh, it's, it sounds like you're still got uh, some work to do yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, you know, it's hard to say right now because, um, I'm raising money, right? And um, what I need is to raise sufficient, a sufficient amount of money to start actually traveling and be able to interview a bunch of people. Now, I'm lucky enough that I'm going to be speaking at a couple conferences where there's going to be a few people. Particularly, there's going to be I'm going to go to the Adopting Bitcoin conference in El Salvador in November. And uh, so, you know, it's a, it's a big conference. It's, uh, I mean, very centered around the kind of topic that my film is trying, you know, hoping to talk about. And, uh, and I know I will have the space there to already run quite a few interviews and build a stronger network. And, and what I want to do is uh, basically raise the funds that allow me to uh, start with the interviews already then, so by November, um, which will allow me to have a lot of content, more content to show and start with the production of the film behind that basically mm -hmm. uh the production itself uh, you know with all these interviews done it would i count at least six months minimum yeah. um so you know if i can have the film out by this time next year that'd be a great success yeah it, oh, it's man. a matter of you know how much money how quickly i manage to raise it yeah i'm gonna take this iterative approach that i raise a certain amount i get to work and while I'm, you know, at work, I'm producing more content, etc. I continue raising money and just go on this way. Yeah. Awesome, it's quite man. expensive uh, making a film. I can, I can imagine. Well, I'm, I'm cheering you on. I, I love the first film. I'm excited to see the, the second one. Um, is, is there anything else um, that you wanted to touch base on before we kind of begin to wrap up here? Um, no, you know, I think that's. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I'm kind of working on. Just a bunch of research on a bunch of topics like that. I'm I'm also working on a new project, although this uh, I'm just gonna hint on it. I'm trying to push this forward as well, which would be also a documentary project, but uh, not the same level of production. Uh, but it's uh, you know about the stablecoin wars and CBDCs and just explain this uh, all of this relationship that that happens in the world. So I think this this will be more in the future. We'll be able to talk about. Awesome. Awesome. And so one question I ask all my guests is my fiat job, I'm an elevator salesperson. So give me your 30 second elevator pitch for Bitcoin. So what if you could have money that no one could control at all, that you would be able to do whatever you wanted with anywhere in the world and be able to spend it instantly without having to wait for three day transfers? Would you go for that? I think most people would, right? And what if I told you that given the world we live in that is by default inflationary, it means that an asset that has a certain amount locked that will never change will always appreciate against our current currencies. So what if you could just hold some money for the long term and the work you're putting in today, fixing your elevators or installing the elevators, could just continue going up in value in the rest of your lifetime that you could then pass on to like your children and grandchildren. Wouldn't you want something like that? There's very high probabilities that Bitcoin really answers these two questions. Awesome. I love it. I love it. So um, let everybody know where they can find you. Let them know about your website. I'll, I'll make sure to put everything in the show notes. Um, but yeah, okay. so you can follow me directly on Twitter if you search for Pierre Corbin or it's at C.R. Corbin. Uh, but more importantly, uh, I recommend everyone to follow uh, The Great Reset Films on Twitter. That's where we're putting, I mean, okay, I retweet everything, so obviously, but uh, that's where, you know, that's the official channel where we're sharing all of that. And uh, and if you're interested, I mean, definitely go watch my first film. Uh, it's on YouTube, The Great Reset and the Rise of Bitcoin. And on that same channel, um, we're posting all these, you know, videos that explain the articles that we've done. And, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, if you want to learn more about that, go check it out. And go check Geyser. That's where we're running our fundraiser. If you don't want to fund us, there's a bunch of really cool projects there too. There's some guys making, you know, video games. There's the the Bitcoin racing car. Like there's a bunch of stuff there. So go check it out. If you have a, sets, a few sets to spare, uh, all the creators there are working hard to try and, you know, make their projects happen. And if not, maybe try out your own project on Geyser. Yeah. Awesome, Pierre. Thank you so much for joining us on the weekly huddle. Uh, and I look forward to hopefully meeting you in person at one of these uh, international meetups at some point. Yeah, well, th thanks a lot for having me. And uh, I hope we meet very soon, too. All right. Cheers.